What if you got up and took a walk in the forest all of a sudden? What if you just joined your local space program? What if all of a sudden you took up deep sea diving? I don't know, but it's, it's nice, nice to, think to think about, about it. it. <laughs> In the previous mission, I talked about the kind of filler that was used in between canon events whenever it comes to the adaptation process. But in this video, I want to focus on the type of filler that isn't so much used for filling out an event so much as to provide a new idea. I'm even questioning it myself on whether to call it filler or not, but nonetheless I do think that this is an interesting topic to talk about. That topic being what-if scenarios. Unlike proper filler, these scenarios are made purely to provide an idea of what could happen if A interacted with C instead of B that one time. They typically exist in art forms with narratives such as books, movies, and video games, with video games being the most prominent with this idea. More than any other art form, really. This is due to the often dynamic nature of video games, where, for example, the amount of collectibles you earn can mean the difference between a special ending and a normal ending or in some cases, a bad ending. However, just as with the other narrative art forms, the follow-up to the original must decide a canon ending to build upon, where the other ending won't get further elaboration. At least, not from the original creators. For you see, while brainstorming what-if scenarios is a prominent thing in of itself, very few art pieces actually commit to making its next installment focus on such scenarios. There are exceptions to this rule, with one video game example being Shadow the Hedgehog. I mean, it was advertised as a Discover Shadow's Past type of adventure, but how it is done is in a very unorthodox manner to what one might expect. You see, to progress through the game, each stage will have one of three objectives for you to choose from, some of them featuring only two, with you only able to choose just one of them to advance a version of the story with Shadow ending up at different areas with different objectives. Well, not necessarily every situation will be different, as what this game allows you to do is arrive at certain story beats from various story scenarios. The result is an overall plotline, where most of the appeal of each and every story is you making sense of each and every one across the 300 plus storylines, yes, 300 plus storylines, that the game has to offer. And yes, each of them have their own individual title. However, though there is an appeal for what-if scenarios, the Shadow the Hedgehog game is often an exception to this rule, due to how the what-if scenarios are utilized. You see, what-if scenarios are usually utilized to elaborate on a scenario that could happen. For example, the Dragon Ball Z Budokai games, that make their own version of the Dragon Ball Z storyline by altering certain events to produce different outcomes. As what if events are not used to further a story, but rather have fun with a previous idea? While there is a case to be made for sticking to canonical events, I personally find the what-if scenarios to be the best parts of Dragon Ball Z games, and I think this is largely due to the overexposure to the main story. The benefit to a what-if scenario is that the creators can do whatever they want, and it doesn't matter that Cell fused with Krillin becoming an orange manlet because it's just a meaningless goof. I think back to notable moments throughout the game series, such as in Tenkaichi 2 where Raditz gets amnesia and teams up with Goku, or in Tenkaichi 3 where the Saiyans crack onto Frieza's plan and attempt to take the tyrant down. The only time they are ever used to quote-unquote further a story is if, say, fans were to make a fan scenario on how a particular series might continue. In this case, I am referring to fan games 
such as Space Quest, Volhall Strikes Back, and Space Quest Incinerations. These are fan games created by fans of the Space Quest games, as a what-if ending to the series following Space Quest VI which was the last official entry in its series that left on a cliffhanger. These what-if scenarios are generally received better by others than with Shadow the Hedgehog, as they elaborate on a previous idea that had to demand to be made, as opposed to just presenting a series of ideas with just one canon outcome that didn't have anything to do with those other what-if scenarios, at least story-wise. But oh, look at the time. I really must be going. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time with something else. Bye!